Richardson instilled a simple recipe of hard work and dedication for the team in preparation for the season ahead. Players and staff went on a community blitz to gather support in the Bayside heartland from Port Melbourne to Portsea and enjoyed family day on the Frankston foreshore with our most dedicated fans. But before the season could begin, St Kilda made its boldest announcement yet, outlining a detailed strategic vision with an eye on 2018. In 2002, we finished second bottom of the ladder and two years later, I'm sure you all remember, we were a kick off a grand final against Port Adelaide, two years later. Things can change quickly and I implore anyone that loves St Kilda, as I'm sure you all do, let's make that change happen. Change was underway, with Eli Templeton, the first rookie of the season, to be elevated. He was among a young trio of debutantes that headed onto Etihad Stadium to play in Saints colours for the first time. The much anticipated round one clash against Melbourne gave Richo his first win in charge of the Saints. The skipper turned back the clock, leading the way in the absence of Hayes and Montagna. And Rewalt's been all over with the goal kick denied. He gets another one. 19 year old South Australian Luke Dunstan impressed in his debut with 21 disposals and 7 tackles, earning the year's first NAB Rising Star nomination. So he's already played at the senior big body level. He's got a decent frame already, hasn't he, for a uh, first game for Luke Dunstan? The Saints look for back-to-back -back wins when they took on Inform GWS in round two. And it got off to a flying start with this hanger from David Armitage. Oh, that is massive. Have a look at the lift he gets. Oh, the little pop there in the hand. <laughs> Tom Hickey looked dangerous early with three first half goals and eight marks against former Swan Shane Mumford. Making himself dangerous this afternoon, Hickey. Very dangerous. Oh, what about that for a kick? And with a bag of five goals, Revolt showed the young guns how to produce a match-winning performance. In a thrilling finale, Templeton clinched the win with this classy finish. In just his second game of football, Eli Templeton. Looking for a celebration. Young yes, fella watching. from Tassie. Still four minutes to go, but what a critical kick, and he knows it, and he nails it! The Saints headed west in round three, embracing the loyal WA fans and hearing from Soldier On representative Grant Meldrum as part of the club's charity program. The, uh, the experience of talking to the team is fantastic. Um, you know, it's, there are some great parallels between uh, those who serve in the Defence Force and those who are uh, playing professional, uh, professional football. Um, the, the commitment, the drive, the dedication, uh, very goal-focused and orientated. Hoping to make it three from three, missed opportunities cost the Saints early in the game, while Sam Gilbert succumbed to a foot injury. But they managed to silence the home crowd for much of the first half. Lee Montagna was on fire in a best on ground performance. This to put the Saints eight points in front. What a classy kick from Lee Montagna. While Luke Delaney held Josh Kennedy to just two goals for the game, putting in a solid effort in defence. The effort was lacking in round four when St Kilda took on Adelaide, despite the inclusion of 2013 Trevor Barker award winner Jack Stephen. Well, Stephen is there. He might be able to do something extraordinary, and he does. The day was made worse by a severe injury to Nathan Wright and an unusual laceration to David Armitage's knee. Off-field, the club continued to strengthen, welcoming new Chief Executive Matt Finnis in the lead-up to Round 5. Taking on a full-strength Bombers outfit, the Saints' usual suspects set the tone early as glimpses of talent from the younger Chargers began to emerge. Fans didn't have to wait long for Jack Billings to show his class. His first goal in AFL football, earning him a Goal of the Year nomination. Billings. And that was just magnificent the way he did that. As the Saints rallied towards their third win of the season, fans were treated with a night to remember. The playing group, brimming with confidence, made the trip across the Tasman for our second international clash in Wellington. Our aim is to, you know, promote the game and, um, you know, it's great that we have a really good partnership with um, Wellington. Anzac Day across the ditch was something special, with thousands turning out to remember the Anzacs that served for both countries. In true AFL style, 
the Wellingtonians were treated to a classic nail-biting finish, with St Kilda falling just three points short. While the result didn't go our way on the field, a strong Kiwi crowd and a $3 million tourism influx strengthened St Kilda's commitment to the new market. A really significant day, obviously, for, for many reasons. Uh, you know, the, the opportunity to play New Zealand, we want to make it our second home, albeit only, only the one game, but that's important to us as a club. The opportunity to represent the, the industry and pay respect to, to Anzac Day.